Hi, my name is Nicole Millard and I'm 29. I specialize in a genre of photography that is known as boudoir. I like to call it self-love photography, so I basically focus on doing a female empowerment session. I do a customized portrait session with women that's based on their lifestyle likes, so fashion, location, everything that they're into, um, to basically just make them feel really awesome, and then we do a photo shoot that will help them improve their self-confidence. I actually had a girlfriend ask if I would do that for her for her um, one year wedding anniversary and it was awesome and it just totally changed the way she saw herself and um, I was hooked, I loved it. When you get something like fashion out of the way and you're kind of um, removing that huge aspect of your identity. For me, boudoir, I really get to see someone being vulnerable, first of all, um, which is huge. And then from them being vulnerable, um, I get a really real, authentic version of who they are, and um, I get to capture that for them. I think it's a really cool time right now because major brands are starting to see that um, consumers have a voice. Major brands listening to what we want to see, we want to see ourselves. My work gets to be a part of that bigger movement where people are putting images of themselves out there and saying like this is what's really real. It's putting out bodies of work of images that are inclusive of a variety of people, I think that's always going to be good. You know, Aerie does the I'm Not Retouched campaign, which is good. Um, there's actually a clothing line called Naya and they make lingerie and they now have nine different shades of nude. Whereas like it used to be beige is nude. I think it's great for girls who are growing up that now they're gonna have so many more options and be able to see images that are, there's a wider variety of what women look like in real life. Selfies are complicated because even that is a constructed image of yourself. Whereas the work that I try and do, I try and capture a woman being genuinely herself as opposed to um, what she thinks other people will maybe like or comment on on the internet. Your body is like your home. This is the only place you have to live. So you have to learn to love it. And to me, I love scars because scars tell a story. Every scar that I have I know is from an adventure or a mistake that I learned from. You spend a lot of time with yourself, so you really have to learn to be your own biggest supporter and your best friend because if you had a friend who spoke to you the way a lot of women speak to themselves, you probably wouldn't want to be their friend um, if someone was like constantly tearing you down, but we do it to ourselves all the time. So yeah, I just think if, if, um, if women could find a way to just love themselves, love each other, and just treat one another as sisters, then we're just so much more powerful that way. Inner beauty is, you know, feeling good about yourself, no matter how you look. Beauty to me would be confidence and also like humility at the same time. Hi, my name is Melissa Kaufelt, and I am a business department head teacher here at Dr. G.W. Williams in Aurora. So I am a cancer survivor uh, for two and a years, two and a half years. I was diagnosed June 2015, uh, just a routine checkup at my doctor's office and was diagnosed with a lump in my armpit and went in and the doctor thought I was stage one and I chose a mastectomy at the time. I already had it in my head that if I'd ever been diagnosed with breast cancer that I was to have a double mastectomy. I was comfortable losing my breast. We attribute breasts with women and certainly meeting women, having no breast, one breast. It didn't change me as a woman. It didn't change who I was as my gender. It changed what I looked maybe visually when I went out in public. When somebody says to you and sits you down and says, you have cancer, there's a lot of different things that go through your mind. I mean, you have to remember, I am one-breasted, bald, lows your eyebrows, your eyelashes, you're bloated, you're sick, you're gray color. I used to have great hair, until it's all right though, but it's just hair and eyebrows, but that's okay, I can live without it. You start to put a little different value on the things that make you you. 
And so whether what comes from inside, right? Your energy, your spirit, your mind, your empowerment, uh, what you can share with other people had nothing to do with whether I had breasts or not. Typically women, we dress for other women. I find they're much more natural. They're not as much makeup as they used to be. So the trend is starting to come back to a more natural setting and girls are much more comfortable in who they are and accepting. And they actually are identifying themselves as, you know, whether I'm skinny or I'm fluffy or whatever term that they want to use that's current at the time and accepting that. As images are changing, I think girls are starting to pull away and go, I know it's not real now. These publicities are coming out there of what the real women are looking like. What does a real go girl look like? You come in at 14 and you just want to identify. You want to be a part of something. We all do. So you want to be part of that group of girls that look like you or you want to be a part of that group. And then as they start to mature and they get to 18 and then they start to realize it's okay to be me. I always say to my students, you know, beauty is just on the outside of the skin. I said, ugly is right bone deep. And beauty can go right inside as well. And I think we're so quick to judge somebody on how they look. Beauty is, are you able to embrace all of your flaws? Do you take all the good things that you have as well? And to be able to take that whole energy and, and be honest. If we were to judge people and not actually see what they were and just to hear them and what they had to offer, we would have a whole different world of what we would think beauty would be. I think like young women are being sexualized at a very much younger age and that's a problem not only for them but also for even the adults around them because there's just a whole new expectation placed on women's behavior. 16 to 20 something when people were still don't know themselves and then they get influenced so much from Instagram so I could see that if they don't look the way, if they don't look like the one that they follow, they may be insecure. My name is Mahogany Harris and I'm 19 years old. Throughout the last like a year and a half I've been really interested in fitness. When I'm done school right now I hope to go back for health and fitness management to become a personal trainer and nutritionist. I got into fitness because I didn't like the way I looked, started working out, started eating better and then slowly I realized that it's something I really love and like really want to do in the future. I would define beauty as finding strength within yourself to just do good things to make changes for the better. There's a lot of girls that focus on like butt workouts and like um, like get your best butt in 60 days type things. People buy into it and then get disappointed when the results aren't the same as them. All of my friends are like, I want a 24 inch waist, I want my hips to look a certain size. Yeah, that's great, but sometimes you're just gen genetically just not like that. If you don't have that naturally, don't expect to go to the gym and get the same results as what you see on Instagram. If those images aren't healthy. I don't look like that naturally. Like I've had to build my body a certain way. I like to follow a lot of people that um, promote like having a healthy m mental health as well as physical health. Yeah, I feel beautiful when I work out. It's so much fun. I love like working out next to a guy and lifting the same amount of weight, like same amount of weights as him. That makes me feel so great and so pretty. I can see that I'm like growing muscles. I can see that like overall physically I'm very strong. I can lift a lot of weight that I could before. It's so hard for women to get too muscular unless like you take hormones for that or if it's a genetic thing. If that's what you want to look like, that's your business. Like like I had, I was talking to a guy one time and I was like, yeah, like I would love abs and like nice shoulders. And he's like, well, guys don't like girls with abs. And I was like, who asked you though? Like that's, that's my body. So why are you concerned about what I want to look like? We see a lot of thin, Caucasian, provocative dressed uh, women who don't represent the vast majority of women like who are around. You see that a lot of brands are trying to appeal to Muslim women by um, offering like modest clothes as well as hijabs, scarves, you know, abayas. Like we saw Uniqlo that released like a line for Muslim women. So yeah, it's like, it's really big right now. I kind of became a model through default. I was never thinking of doing it, but when I went to the New York Film Academy in 2009, I just wanted to test the waters and see if acting was something that I can do. When I chose modeling jobs, there was a list of things I said 
I would be comfortable doing and or I wouldn't be comfortable doing. Wearing like sleeveless. I wanted to still maintain a modest look and I lost quite a few gigs because of that. So I had limitations, but I had to stick to my values as well. Social media now, it's become like routine for like a little girl can take a selfie and it's the age of the selfies, right? So people are very involved in themselves in that way, very self-absorbed. I feel like the whole society is moving towards one where, you know, it's all about me, it's all about me. I'd audition, but a lot of the times I would lose out to another person who was taller, you know, had longer hair, like lovely tresses, or looked more Indian, darker skin tone. There was a really good dove a commercial that I wanted to be in but then I lost out on it because they wanted women at a certain height. I felt like I wanted to be a part of that so badly. The message they were sending out to the women that you know you're beautiful however you are. I think of Giselle Bündchen and all the supermodels, Cindy Crawford. When I was growing up they, these models were very uh, prominent. I could never aspire to be like them. They were tall, skinny, blonde, we could never reach that. We're all unique in our own way, and that should be brought to the forefront, especially since we are such a diverse community here in Canada. All people should be showcased. It was very alien to me to wear a hijab for myself. You know, it didn't feel comfortable. But I don't think that's true for other people. I should, you know, it, it broadened my outlook. So it gave me more respect to, to the religion and, and the reasons why people wear it. Modeling doesn't have to be a bad profession if it is approached with dignity and give everyone equal opportunities. Beauty to me is uh, feeling good about yourself. People who feel really good about themselves and they're sure of themselves and they're confident radiate a completely different energy and I can see that. Beauty is smart. Beauty is to be a good person, to do good things. I've had a lot of life experiences so my beauty is a very different version than my kids, my husband, the students that I teach uh, because of our life experiences. I think to me beauty is a feeling. It's not an actual thing. As long as they are healthy, I think they are beautiful. It's my body. I work out for myself. I try to look good for myself. So if you don't like it, like, that's fine. It's not your body. It's my business. So don't worry about me. I like smiles on people's face and that's kind of beauty to me. We are such a diverse community now here that it should reflect on every, every billboard or every uh, magazine. You know, it, it should be kind of equal across the board. And then I would say that, hey, we have a good Canada here. <laughs>